Okay, hear me out on this one. Does this or does this nebula not look exactly like a xenomorph from the Alien franchise? It's actually the eastern part of the much larger Veil Nebula, a huge landscape built of gas and cosmic dust. There are a few separate sections of the larger nebula that are named and catalogued. But come on, let's be real. The Alien section is clearly the coolest. Two thousand four hundred light years away, deep within the Cygnus constellation, the Veil Nebula glows in the darkness. It makes up a portion of an enormous supernova remnant, the leftovers of an exploded star that was twenty times more massive than our Sun and went boom between ten and twenty thousand years ago. This supernova remnant is known as the Cygnus Loop, and it's the visible sections we can see here. These various sections have picked up different names over the years, including the Alien Nebula, or the Eastern Veil Nebula if you want to use its boring name. The Western Veil Nebula is on the other side, and Pickering's Triangle is just here. This last one was first photographed by Wilhelmina Fleming in 1904, but was named after the director of her observatory, Charles Pickering. It was customary at the time to do this, but I think we can all agree now that that's lame and we should call it Fleming's Triangle instead. Actually, to continue the spooky theme of a xenomorph-looking nebula, part of the Western Vale Nebula is also sometimes known as the Witch's Broom Nebula. On that same note again, take a closer look at Fleming's Triangle too. If we spin it round, to me, it looks just like an alien as well, just looking face on instead of from the side. When the star exploded and left all of this dusty mess, it would have been brighter than Venus in the sky, so easily visible to the naked eye of our distant ancestors, and it would have looked about 36 times larger than the full moon on the sky. As the blast from the explosion smashes into the cooler gas that surrounds it, this energises the gas and emits light. The delicate filaments with such a fragile experience are the source of the Veil Nebula's name. The nebula is also expanding at about 1.5 million kilometers an hour, and this expansion has been visible through Hubble images over time. It's been imaged by the telescope between 1997 and 2015, and over that time we can see it expanding by a visible amount. We can also tell by the colors of the image that the nebula contains oxygen, sulfur and hydrogen and using other telescopes has told us that the nebula is also a strong emitter of radio waves and x-rays. This bright star here is absolutely nothing to do with the nebula, and it's just a star called 52 Cygni that happens to lie between us and the nebula, but it's not actually part of the nebula at all. A nebula is basically just an enormous cloud of space dust and space gas, plus all the space gunk that was spewed out by the exploding star that created it. This one was discovered by the prolific Caroline Herschel, possibly with some help from her assistant William, although presumably they didn't think it looked like an alien from the 1980s, seeing as they discovered it back in 1784. Other than the alien-like part of it, am I right about that by the way? Let me know in the comments if you can see it too. My other favourite part of the nebula looks just like Rainbow Road from Mario Kart. Or is it the Bifrost from the first Thor movie? Let me know which of those you think it is in the comments too. This is another image from Hubble and it shows the aforementioned Witch's Broom Nebula. Come on though, look at it. A Witch's Broom or Rainbow Road? I think the answer is pretty obvious here. Some of the filaments are so thin here that they're over 50,000 times smaller than the radius of the nebula, and they can only be seen from the right angle because they're so thin. But even this is actually the same distance as it is from Earth to Pluto, about 4 billion miles. I hope you enjoyed this quick look at an amazing object in space, and let me know your opinions about what it looks like and whether you think it's cool. Subscribe if you're new, and I hope to see you again on another episode of Chris Talks About a Space Thing. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye.